I know that many of you are aware that these last two years have been difficult due to so many countless factors. And over this time, I've been reminded of the brevity and the unpredictability of life, but also unique to to me and to my family is the importance of and the proximity to family. And so coming out of COVID, my wife and I, we felt an increased need for family support. Uh, Yesterday, by God's grace, our second oldest graduated high school, two down, five to go. Um, And we have approximately a decade left of parenting our five younger ones towards their own graduation. And church family, I want to share with you today that an opportunity that only the Lord could have orchestrated presented itself for my family to relocate to the East Coast. We're blessed to have both sets of our parents in relatively good health, And we really, if God would allow us, we want to make the next few years count with them. Our kids love their grandparents and their extended family. They just don't get to see their grandparents and extended family. So after prayerful consideration and conversations with those who know us best, we've concluded that this is the Lord's provision for us. So this past week, I let the Bethel elders, the campus pastors and elders, and several of our staff know that I would be transitioning out of Bethel this summer. As it stands now, my final Sunday as your senior pastor will be July 3rd. I want to be clear. Nothing has happened by God's grace. No one's pushing me out. This is a family first decision. I want you to, if you've never seen my family, I know many of you have, I wanted to show you a picture of my, my crew. There's us at the, at the cherry blossoms on UW campus where my oldest daughter attends. I do want you to know that this is a decision that was made with the folks that you see on the screen primarily in mind. I'm attempting to honor the greatest titles that God has given me on planet Earth, husband and father. As we've been thinking about this and wrestling through this, my wife pointed out that God has used me over the last 20 years to be a stabilizing force in every church that I've been a part of. I hope that he's been able to use me in that way here at Bethel. But she asked the question and we've pondered, I wonder if God's not gonna use me to be the stabilizing force that I've been for the church, for our family in this next season. I just wanna say that my time at Bethel has been a gift. Over 20 years of vocational ministry, I can honestly say that some of the most fruitful and life-giving years that we have spent in ministry have been shoulder to shoulder with many of you. First, I served as the campus pastor at our Prosser campus where I still call home for five years and then over the last two years as your senior pastor. I can't say that this is an easy decision, but our decision is made a bit easier knowing that Bethel is growing once again and it's gaining momentum and reaching the 3630. I had a conversation with a congregate last week who came up to me and said, Pastor, I want to share with you. I now know what my portion of the 3630 is. I do believe that Bethel is poised to boldly move into the next chapter of growth and kingdom impact, which to be honest, makes our departure bittersweet. But we're equally as excited for this next season for our family, and we would certainly covet your prayers in that. And so... I'm not sure how you feel right now. And to be honest with you, I'm not sure how I feel right now. This has been a difficult week of sharing with friends and with family this transition that's coming for us. But I'm certain that if you're a part of the Bethel family here, you're probably processing and pondering questions like, what's next and what now? I just want you to know that I've already started working with our elders to begin the early stages of a transition plan for our next senior pastor. And we're going to be updating you on a regular basis starting this week. And then every Sunday after we're going to be sharing with you news. And so if you can be here next Sunday and the following few Sundays, uh, we we need you to be here. Um, We're going to be sharing important news information. And if you can't be here, please do join us online, but be engaged. The final thing that I want to say are not words from me, but it's actually words from this text. As Paul is wrapping up 
a group of people that are struggling because they've had leader transition and they're wondering about if things were better when Paul was there or they've been better now that Paulos is there, but Apollos would leave soon after. Where are they supposed to put their hope? In a time of transition, and this is what Paul says to them. 1 Corinthians 3, verses 21 through 23. Paul concludes this way, so let no one boast in human leaders for everything speaking of the Lord, is yours. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, everything is yours. And you belong to Christ and Christ belongs to God. Here's what he says. Don't boast in leaders. Don't get caught up in the current climate of our world. Don't let life sway you or even death sway you. Don't be taken aback by what's happening today or worrying about what may happen tomorrow. Everything is his. He is in control. And you and I need to do our best to be found faithful in this season and in the one to come. Bethel Church, it's been my privilege to be your waiter.